I get asked really often, what do I use for wireless attacks? What kind of hardware and software do I use? So I'll get to software in a moment, but typically I'll use a laptop. I don't use special fluke devices. I don't use special crazy meters or things like that with lights and signals and giant rotating antennas. I, I get a laptop. I have a laptop that has an external adapter, an external wireless adapter, and drivers that allow promiscuous mode so I can actually do sniffing. Typically, this would be Air PCAP or the Realtek chipset, 8187 chipset. You can take a look. There's plenty and plenty of vendors. I don't want to endorse any in particular, but there's a lot of vendors that sell wireless adapters, external wireless adapters that use the Realtek chipset. Air PCAP is probably the best if I'm cracking within Windows because the drivers and the devices are really stable in Windows. Realtek works pretty well in both Windows and in Linux, although the drivers for promiscuous mode in Windows for Realtek chipsets have been a little bit flaky. They've gotten better, but they're still not quite perfect enough. So I have one of each I typically keep. And then antennas. Do I need special antennas? No. I usually just take the ones that come stock with either the Realtek or the Air PCAP external, and I'll often buy one or two directional antennas to use to point straight at an access point so I can get better signal strength from a longer distance away. I don't necessarily need these. If I'm close enough, it won't really matter, but the higher quality, the better transmission and reception I get, the faster the attack is going to be and the less time I have to spend on wireless. I'll usually also keep two operating systems handy. I'll keep Windows handy because in my experience running Wireshark on Windows is more stable and more usable than on Linux. On the other hand, Backtrack Linux is a great platform for wireless cracking itself and there's a lot of great tools that are built into Backtrack Linux for wireless attacks. So I usually keep both. I just get a feel for which one works best for which environment and Actually, it's your preference, whatever you want to use. I would recommend you keep a current update version of Windows and a current updated version of Backtrack Linux handy for wireless attacks. For software, Network Monitor works on Windows. It's a great packet analysis tool. I don't use it for sniffing as I use it as much as I use it for parsing captures once I've captured them with something like Wireshark. Wireshark works great. It's really, really stable. It's really fast. It's occasionally got challenges with some of the parsers. It gets better every version, so I can't really pick apart because if I gave you an example, by the time you saw this video, it wouldn't be valid anymore. So it's really, again, personal preference. Do you prefer Network Monitor? Use it. Do you prefer Wireshark? Use it. Insider and in SSIDER is a fun little free tool that comes from MetaGeek. And it's great for understanding what wireless networks are out there. It displays in a really nice, pretty way what wireless networks are around, the signal strength, and so forth. It's worth worth downloading and trying out. And one word of caution, this last one, Kane Enable. It's actually a great tool, been around for a very long time, and it is sort of self-contained in that it does a lot of sniffing and cracking and network analysis, wireless network analysis on its own. And it's got a lot of the drivers built right into it. So at the surface, it sounds like a great tool you'd want to put in your toolkit. There's two drawbacks actually for using it here. First of all, the first drawback is that it is somewhat unstable. It does tend to crash when it's doing wireless network sniffing and cracking. Just how it is, it's it's not a perfect tool. The second problem, and the one that that impacts administrators more than it does ethical hackers with dedicated hardware and software solutions, can enable often gets flagged as a virus or as malware by a lot of scanners. And theoretically it could be, it could be it's more of a hacker tool than anything else, but because it can get flagged, because it can actually send up alarms in your network, it's something that you should be cognizant of, be aware of, and maybe only use it on isolated systems or only use it in certain cases. You should probably get familiar with it. You should probably download all of these if you haven't already and get familiar with whatever one is going to be your preference.